What's up, Zero Division members? Today we're going to be discussing Volume 36 of Berserk. The first thing I want to talk about is how far Isidro and Farnese have come as characters. I've talked about Farnese's character development in the past, but now I want to talk about her training as a mage and her first successful uh, spell casting, basically. Her gaining the protection of the four spirits of the different directions, the east, the west, the south, and the north. Uh, I really enjoyed seeing that because it shows us that she's filling her role in the group as a mage and Casca's babysitter. She's showing herself to be more useful. Then during the battle with the ghost ship, we've seen Isidro get a rematch against the pirate that he fought in Vitranis. And he was able to get an upper hand. He was using his training that he had with, I think his name is Anzo, the guy that was, you know, the, the guy with the mustache that's a stowaway right now. We're seeing the fruits of his labor and the, you know, the experience he gained from having spars with this guy. Isidro is becoming a better swordsman, and I enjoyed seeing that as well. So we're seeing how the members of Guts's group are changing during their journeys with Guts, which is good to see, because for a while, Guts was always the one that was protecting everybody. Sure, Serpico helped out, but now we're getting to see these characters shine in their own way, away from Guts, because Guts is inside the belly of the beast, the sea god, with Shirke, and he's doing work trying to get to the heart. So it was good seeing these these different moments from these characters, We're getting because we're getting to see them in the, in the limelight, rather than always seeing Guts. So I enjoyed seeing that. Now I want to talk about the Moonlight Boy showing himself once again to Guts and Casca. This only solidifies my theory that this is their child and that he can show himself during full moons because that's when magic is at its strongest. So either he is gaining control of Griffith's body during full moons or he's splitting off from Griffith and going to his parents. But either way, this is Casca and Guts' child. There's no doubt about it. It looks just like... Uh, Casca as a boy basically with the long black hair and once again he helped Guts gain control of himself in the Berserker armor like he did in a previous volume. So I enjoy seeing the Moonlight Boy again but I want to know exactly what's going on with him. I want Miura to explain further what exactly is going on in this whole situation because other than him showing himself and getting protected by Casca and then helping Guts gain control of himself the Moonlight Boy really didn't do much in this volume. The only other thing he did was point out when he climbed up on the net or whatever, he pointed over at the island and shown everybody that the sea god was reawakening itself uh, and just and basically sinking the island. Meanwhile, Guts and Shirka are inside its stomach. So other than that, the Moonlight Boy didn't have a huge role in this volume. Maybe next volume will have a bigger role and he'll protect Casca and Guts. I don't know. But the other thing I want to talk about now is the legend of these mermaids or marrows that Isma told Shirke or told Isidro and how it came it, it, it's it's real it basically existed at some point and now it's showing itself because the two worlds have combined the world of fantasy and the world of the physical and this arc is basically to show us the after effects of that event that happened um, during the uh, the whole Falconia arc basically and we're seeing these creatures of legend actually exist in the physical world because these two worlds have merged. So that's all this arc really is. And I, I'm enjoying it for what it is, though I'm, I'm, I want it to end because I want to see what's going to happen after all of this. I want Guts and the crew to get to the Elf Island, but the bottom line is I don't think they will in Volume 37. Maybe in the chapters that have been released online they get there, I don't know. But I, I don't think they do. But basically, we see Isma is a mermaid, um, and the story that her, her father told her is true, that the mermaid sealed the sea god inside the island way back in the day, and the sea god has reawakened itself, destroying the island. Isma turned into a mermaid, and we see a bunch of other mermaids go to do battle against the sea god. Um, so that legend basically comes true, and Isma's surprised. She's like, oh, my, my, my pa was right, you know? He was telling me the truth, but she never knew that she was a mermaid herself. So it was interesting to see that as well. But like I said, this arc is basically just to show us the after effects of the merging of the two worlds. And that's fine. That's good. We need something like that to show us what exactly is going on in the world after that huge event between Ganeshka and Griffith and the Skull Knight and whatnot. But other than that, all this volume was was basically huge battles. 
the Moonlight Boy appearing again, and us seeing Farnese and Serpico's training pay off, basically. And I, I, I'm glad that that we, we got to see that because I've been waiting for I was, I've been waiting for Farnese. I can't even talk today, guys. I've been waiting for Farnese to showcase her, her abilities as a mage because she's been training with Shirke, which is, which. It's about time we got to see it. We've seen her use those snakes and everything to bind, you know, creatures, but we've never seen her use magic yet, and this is the first time we did. And it shows us that she has a future as a mage, and she has a future as a mage in Guts's group. She fills a role alongside Shirke, which is good. It just brings Guts's crew's power level, which I hate to say that, but it brings it a notch up now. And same with Isidro, learning to be a swordsman, becoming a better swordsman. They're gaining... They're gaining ammunition against these fantastical creatures. They're becoming stronger as a gang, as a crew, which is good. But uh, that's all I really have to talk about. Very short review because not a whole lot happened. I will say I want this arc to end next volume. And when I get into the chapters, hopefully it's a different arc. Because this arc is just basically, like I said, to show us the merging of the two worlds. Meanwhile, we're getting little bits and pieces of characters training how, how it paid off and whatnot, so that's good. Um, and once again, the Moonlight Boy shows up, but he really doesn't do much in this volume. I'd like to see more of him, and I would like to see Miura show us and explain to us more about the Moonlight Boy and his connection with Casca and Guts, um, and maybe even prove our theory to be correct. So I guess we'll see what happens. I know Miura's on break. He rarely puts out a chapter, but hopefully... He'll pick it up soon. What are your thoughts on this volume, guys? Leave it in the comments below. Like and subscribe if you haven't done so. I'm sorry if this felt a little out of place, if I feel if I feel kind of out of the loop and I'm not my normal self. I had a hard time recording this video. This is probably the 15th take I took on this video. Uh, but there wasn't really much to talk about in this video, and I wanted to kind of make it longer. But, you know... It is what it is. There wasn't much to talk about in this volume, so that's why it's a shorter video. Hope you guys enjoyed. Leave your comments down below. Let me know what you think of this volume. Let me know what you think of this arc as well. I'll catch you guys later.